chemistry is almost done. Not almost done, it's done. So uh, now we are starting up with a very fresh chapter in physics, and the first chapter in physics is motion. Okay. <coughs> now motion simply everyone knows what actually motion is, but there are different kinds of motion. Okay. So right from the boards so flying. If I am moving here and there, and the planets rotating, uh, revolving around the sun, these are all different types of motions. If you run, an athlete running, a bus moving, a car moving, anything, these are all motions. Now, motions are different types. That is known to everyone. Now, what I am trying to say here is, motions. How do you specify motion, or how do you define motion? We say that when an object Changes its position. Changes its position with respect to time. The object is executed. The object is set to execute motion. Now, if an object, if I have, if I have an object here, this object is here. It is static at rest. If it changes in position, if it changes its position with passage of time, then we call it motion. Okay? So that is a very simple and basic definition. If an object changes its position with respect to time, then it is called motion. Now, what about motion of the air? Air also moves. Now, how do you know? That? Now, here, when I was taking this duster, we were seeing that there is a relative change in the position of this object with passage of time. But how do you say that air is moving? Isn't it? How do you say that? We see the wind, we see uh, the you know the leaves of the trees which are shaking, the dust particles which are moving around, and we say that uh, air is uh, air is also executing motion. Okay. So basically, what I'm trying to say is motion is not necessarily so simple. It may be complex, and it is not always that way. It is visible. It is visible with our daily lives. Okay, we can just feel it. Uh, for example, the motion of air. We can feel the motion of air, isn't it? You can you can just come outside and you can see the the leaves of the plants. They are shaking. The dust particles. They are uh, you know uh, they are moving uh, and the flags that are uh, trembling. These sort of uh, examples give you a gist about how air is executing motion. So there are other different types of motion also. For example, the planets revolving or rotating around the uh, I mean the planets revolving around the sun. For example, the earth rotates around uh, it rotates on its own axis but revolves around the sun. So that is also a type of motion. So what basically I am trying to say is there are different kinds of motion. Okay, and we will have to discuss about it uh, about those types of motions in details in this chapter. Okay, the very first very simple uh, type of motion. Simplest type of motion is your translatory motion. Translatory motion. Now, translatory motion means motion in a straight line. Motion in a straight line is called translatory motion. Okay. Translatory motion, or uh, there are other types also. Rotate, uh, rotational motion. There are there vibrational motion. Uh, there are plenty other type of motion. So we will discuss about each and every type in details in this chapter. For example, let us consider about translational motion. Yeah. Now, when you are talking about motion, you have to fix a reference point. What you have to fix? You have to fix a reference point. The reference point is sometimes called is also sometimes called origin. Okay. Reference point is also known as origin. Suppose we have a part. We have a particle here. We have a particle here at point O. This is a point O. Okay. Uh, I will take it in a scale. This is a straight line. The particle is moving in a straight line. Thirty. Okay. Let us consider the motion of a particle in a straight line. Now let this particle start moving from here. So O becomes the reference point. So let it move. 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 Let it reach here. Okay. 
magnetic field set. So this particle has traversed a distance 80, 80 meters. So this is expressed in meters. So this particle has traversed a distance equal to distance equal to 80 meters. Suppose this point is A. This particle has traversed a distance 80 meters. Fine. It's very simple. Okay. Now suppose this particle again comes back here. He wants to, he or she wants to come back for stopping. He must have, he or me, he must have forgotten something. So he comes back here and reaches here at this point, say B. Now what is the total distance covered? Now 80 meter is, uh, what is the distance? OA, 80 meter is OA. Now, what I am trying to say is, this particle went here and now it has come back here. So now what is the total distance covered? Say B2, B2, total distance covered, total distance. What is the total distance travel? Total distance travel will be OA plus AB. is equal to OA plus AB. This much it has travel plus this much it has travel. So how much is this one? 10, 20, 30. So uh, this is 80 plus 30 will give you 110 meters. Is this understood? So the total distance traveled by the particle when it went from O to A and back from A to B is 110 meters. It's fine. Now this is just related to distance. This I am saying distance here we are not concerned about the direction. Whether it is moving forward or backward it doesn't matter. It may move forward, it may move backward, it doesn't matter. You are just considering the magnitude. You are just considering the magnitude. We are not considering the direction. Is going here and it is coming back, so we could have taken minus sign also, but we are not doing that because we are only concerned about the magnitude and the magnitude of change in position with respect to time is known as distance. Distance travelled by distance travelled by the particle with passage of time is 80 meter OA and is 80 plus 30 that is 110 meter that is OA plus AB in the second place. Is this okay now? What if we consider the direction also? Now, before going into uh, the details of both direction, let me introduce a new concept which considers direction as the displacement. Okay? Now, displacement. Now, distance travelled by the particle when it travels from O to A and back from A to B is 110 meter. Now, what is the displacement? Displacement is the shortest distance. Displacement is the shortest distance. How will you know? Suppose you want to go from here to here. Okay? There are so many paths to go from here to here. You can use this path, you can use this path, or you can simply use this straight path. You can use any path, isn't it? So you can use any path to reach from here to here. You can even do like this. You can go from here and you can reach here. There are plenty of methods. There are plenty of ways in which a person can or if a particle can go from here to here. What is the shortest distance? What is the shortest distance which can be traversed by a particle to accomplish this distance? Is known as displacement. So displacement always the shortest distance in this case will be this statement, obviously. So, the sort, so, when we say displacement, it will be expressed as the shortest distance. Okay? So, if a particle moves from O to A, what is the displacement? Displacement O A is, displacement is 80 meter. No problem. Okay? Now, if the particle moves from O to A and again back from A to B, what is the displacement? Displacement. Displacement in the second place. Displacement in the second place. B2. What will be the dis displacement? It will be very simple. You have to consider the shortest distance. Shortest distance is this much. Isn't it? 50. It will be 50. Are okay. you understanding? If we have considered a considered distance, it would have been 80 plus 30. That is 110. But when they are saying displacement, displacement is the shortest distance from the reference point. So this is the distance that is travels from the reference point. I understand. Displacement is uh, considered 
from the reference point. The amount of distance, shortest distance traveled from the reference point. So the displacement will be simply 50 meters and not 110 meters. Okay. So displacement may be equal to distance and it may not be equal to distance depending upon the type of motion it is under. Okay. Is it okay? So what I am trying to say is displacement and distance are two different quantities. Sometimes they may be equal and sometimes they are not equal. Displacement is directional dependent. It depends upon the direction as well. Whereas distance it does not depend upon the direction. Okay. So for the time being uh, we will stop here for today and uh, we will uh, we'll continue our discussion about it in the next session. Okay. Thank you so much.